Hi everybody, this will be part three in the character rigging tutorial series. So last video we discussed just how to create joints and the two major ways that we can create joints as well as some major things to think about uh, and not necessarily rule sets but guidelines to follow as you're creating joints. So I'm going to delete this joint system that we created uh, by scratch and we're going to make sure um, that we turn on one thing. So if I go to shading x-ray joints uh, whenever I click a joint to create it within the body, I will uh, be able to see that joint through the geometry. Um, so let's go to the side view, and I'll show you why that's important here in a minute. So we can, we can turn on our textures if we want to. But when I get my Create Joints tool and come in here and click in the center of the torso for the pelvis, I can't really see that joint. So that's going to make it difficult for me to be able to see and position and rotate those joints properly. So in every view, what you'll need to do is go to shading and turn on x-ray joints. That way I can see that joint in the viewport. So back in the perspective view, I'm going to go to shading, x-ray joints. Then I can see that small little joint back in the perspective view. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with my joint tool, come in here and click on uh, the center of the body where I want my basic joint to be selected. Uh, this is going to be the root joint for my torso. So each one of these body parts, the arms, the legs, the torso, I always want to start with the root joint, work my way out to the farthest part away from that root joint. So for a character to animate properly, the root joint of the torso is the pelvis. We're going to work our way up to the head. So I'm going to start with the pelvis. And I created one joint, and then I'm going to make sure it's positioned where I want it to be. Um, now there are two ways we can position joints. There is the anatomical way, and then uh, the um, uh, center of the mass method. So the anatomical way is, is technically our pelvis of our human body would be back here uh, with our spinal cord and whatnot and that's really where our body would rotate based off of and that could work but the issue is the front of the crotch and the front of the stomach would crunch a little more as we start to bend forward so what actually works better in some occasions is to move that pelvis joint in the entire joint system to the center of the mass of the body so that is equal distance from the back of the character to the front of the character and also from the front side as equal distance from the left and the right side of the character. So we're going to create joints from the center of the mass of the character. So this is going to be my pelvis joint. I'm going to come back and name all my joints after I create my joints vertically. I'm going to go to my, maybe move it forward just a little bit. I'm going to go to my side view and hit control D and this is going to be my start of my spine joint. So pelvis, my next joints up are going to be spine joints. So I'm going to create probably two joints uh, moving up. And I don't have to follow particularly my line work of my geometry. But having your geometry visible can also be very helpful to see where you might want to place joints. So that's this button right here to turn on the wireframe on shaded. I'm going to leave it about right there. And I'm going to create uh, another joint. So we'll do control D. And I'm going to move it up to right underneath the rib cage. Something like that. Just going to make sure. I'm going to turn off my cloth for a second so I can see my body. Here we go. So maybe my rib cage might be a little lower there. Down a little bit. Maybe this could go down a little bit. Uh, so our rib cage from the bottom of the ribs to the sternum is an area that doesn't really rotate that much. So we don't really need a lot of joints there. So maybe two or three joints from the pelvis to the bottom of the rib cage. Uh, but we don't really need one uh, in the rib cage area because that's more of a rigid structure. So I'm going to go, let's actually go to a side view and hit control D. And then I'm going to put one up kind of parallel to the shoulders. But this is going to be um, kind of the base where the shoulders are going to connect. Something like that. This one really isn't going to rotate much. This could also uh, be right underneath where the first neck joint would be. Something right there. Okay. We'll maybe try to move it to the center of the mass forward a little bit. The next one's going to be my first neck joint, so let's hit Control D, and we'll pull that one up. Let's look at it from the perspective view as well, maybe down just a little bit. It's like a good starting point. Move it forward a little. That'll work right there. 
Uh, so we'll also do a second neck joint, so control D. Move that kind of like the center of the neck. Uh, and we could do two to three neck joints as well. Just depends on how much movement you want to have there. So let's do just one more and we'll pull this kind of right underneath where the, the neck meets the head, something like that. There you go. Pull this one back a little. All right. We're going to want to put one for the center of the head. So we'll do control D. Uh, and this is typically, I like to put it like right above where the ear is. We'll do control D again. Not that this last joint is necessary all the time, but I like to put one at the top of the head so I know where the base top of the head is. So there are my joints for my torso. Um, we can go back and kind of make sure everything is positioned where we want it to be. We're not going to need any joints in the center cavity uh, because that's a rigid structure. But there are my joints for my torso. Uh, before I parent things up, I want to make sure, let's just go ahead and go to display, animation, joint size, and scale these up some more so we can see them. There you go. What I want to do is go ahead and rotate my joints so that they are already angled towards my next joint. So my pelvis joint would stay stationary like this, but from a side view, I don't know if it's easier to see without my texture on there, yeah, kind of not. Um, so from a side view, my spine joint tooth, let's go ahead and name these. So let's say joint pelvis, and then J underscore, J underscore spine one. I'm gonna go ahead and name all of these down, J spine two. J spine three. Oh, this is the base neck. J neck one. J neck two. J neck three. Okay. And then I have J head one. J head two. So you don't always have to name these like the anatomical bone name. Um, as long as you understand them, uh, that's all that really matters. Okay, so my pelvis joint, I'm gonna, not going to rotate that. I'm going to keep with the default horizontal vertical lines. But my next spine joint one that is above that, I want to rotate this so that it is pointing or one axis, which is going to be the Z rotate, is rotated towards the next joint underneath that, so the spine joint two. If you hit your plus or minus keys on the keyboard, that increases the size of the manipulator, as in this point of view, the rotate tool. So what I want is that this vertical line, the z-axis, to rotate so that it faces the center of the next joint up. Okay, so this rotate of the joint for spine one is going to follow the direction of spine two. Now let's move up to spine two, find where my next joint is, which is right here. And I'm going to rotate this back so it follows the rotate angle of spine three. So each joint, this one doesn't need to be that big, so we'll kind of scale the manipulator down. Joint three is going to aim at the neck one. Neck, whoop, we missed one actually, so let's see. This one goes back here because there's neck one right there. Neck one is going to rotate towards neck two, so that's going to rotate forward. Neck three is going to rotate towards neck four or neck two to neck three, sorry. Neck two, or this is three. Neck three to head one. Head one to the end, head two. And I usually don't mess with head two because I'm not gonna rotate this top joint. This is just a reference joint for me. All right, so we can scale our rotate tool down more. So that's important to rotate each joint uh, so that it follows in the direction of the next joint. All right, so now we're ready to parent everything up. So there's my joints. They're all individual. I've selected the belt base pelvis joint, duplicated that, moved it up, rotated it so it follows the next child joint, uh, and then renamed everything. So to parent, I just start with my joint furthest away from the pelvis, head two, and then in the outliner, I can hit control click. In the perspective view, I can hit shift click. So control click, whatever with parenting, whatever you select the second uh, command is going to be the parent. So head two, control click, head one, P for parent. One way to always note if your joints are 
parented properly is the thick part of that tapered pyramid is going to always face the parent. The thin part, the tapered part, is always going to face the child. So as long as your pyramids in the joints for the bones are always facing away from the pelvis, you've parented all of your joints properly. So head one, control click, neck three, P for parent. Neck three, control click, neck two, P for parent. Neck two, control click, neck one, P for parent. And I'm working my way all the way up. Neck one to spine three, spine three to spine two. I'm hitting P for parent each time. Spine two to spine one, spine one to pelvis. Okay, so there is my joint hierarchy. I can scale this up even more so we can see everything. There's my pelvis to top of head joint hierarchy. In a later video, we'll also come back and add some joints for the mouth and the eyes. But we're going to start with the largest part of the character, which is the torso. And then we're going to start with the root joint, the pelvis, and work our way, parent up our way to the top of the head. All right, next video, we'll come back and talk about how to set up the joints for uh, the legs. And then we'll move to the arms and other body parts.